Just commenting, it's a little hard for Council Cogsall to see the flag. <laughs> um, we have three sets of minutes one from our November 9th meeting, one from a special council meeting of November 12th, and one from a special council meeting of November 16th. I'd like a motion on those, please. I'll move the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. 7 0. At this point in the evening, we have time for citizen discussion of items that are not on the agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to address the council on an item that is not on the regular agenda tonight? Okay, seeing none, we have reports and correspondence from councillors. Anybody? Dr. Krillman? Yes, uh, uh, council chairwoman. I have a uh, sort of, you know, good, good news on the one hand and bad news on the other. Uh, representing uh, our town on the Cumberland County Budget Advisory uh, Committee, I can report that it appears that the final numbers for 1993, the county budget, will be the following. Cape Elizabeth will be assessed uh, $440,846. This is a $102,000 increase over last year as a consequence of the uh, new jail coming online toward the end of 1993 or a 30.21% uh, tax change over last year. Um, all I can say is that the original story was much worse. Uh, it was about a 42% increase, and we worked very hard over the last couple of months with the three commissioners to pare down uh, all of the non-jail expenses, and I can delightfully say that that amounted to a 0.62% increase over last year, uh, where we did very, very well, but as you all know we did vote for a new jail and uh, it's being built at this moment and, and it should be starting to be operational at the uh, end of December 1993 and that's why our assessment is so high paying off the bond money for that jail so that's basically the story for the Cumberland County uh, assessment uh, over the next year thank you for the good news <laughs> we know it could have been higher and we do appreciate your efforts on that advisory commission and from what I've heard from the commissioners they are becoming sounded to me like they're becoming more and more receptive to the comments from that board yeah, which agree. is good news too. Councilor Jordan. Yes I just want to re report that uh, the committee uh, that I was on in privatizing the Cumberland County Civic Center completed its work and turned uh, report over to the county commissioners today and they will still act on it at their meeting this afternoon so there'll be some publicity out on it i guess after they review it very good we're doing a lot of work with the county these days anybody else that's excuse me sir oh i say that's all that's all okay well billy and i'll go back and forth tonight okay council Krillman again. Uh, <laughs> yes as chairman of the appointments committee of the town council i do want to remind citizens who are both here this evening and also watching from the warmth of their uh, tv rooms at home that indeed this is the time of the year that the appointments committee uh, begins interviewing uh, citizens for positions on boards and commissions of the town I hope everyone saw the last uh, Cape Courier article indicating that there are uh, vacancies on I think almost every board and commission uh, coming up for uh, new appointments as of March of 1993. So anyone who is uh, listening to me this evening, if you wish to be considered for an appointment, um, you can easily obtain an application from uh, our town clerk, Debbie Pizzo, uh, at the clerk's office. Um, deadline for applications is Wednesday, January 6th. So please, uh, by all means, uh, tell us of your interest and we'll make uh, every effort to uh, do our best with regard to uh, appointments uh, to help uh, you give your input 
every available opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Creelman. Councillor Chapel. Yes, uh, I'd like to report to the Chair and the Council on the last meeting of Regional Waste Services when we spent the entire evening on the landfill situation. <clears throat> you probably know by the letter that you've got in front of you tonight that they're closing all landfills as December 31st, but they, where the RWS Board voted to uh, go ahead with the Gorham facility, they're going to uh, ration out a system whereby six of the uh, towns can stay, or cities can stay open, and everybody else will be bringing the, their waste during that period to that, those that uh, put in an application to stay open. Uh, needless to say, it creates a lot of problems, got some good points and got some bad points. As a result, we're meeting at 7.30 Wednesday morning, and again at 7 o'clock Thursday night. We'll let you know at the next meeting how we do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Anybody else? Okay, a few things that I've been up to in the last month. Did attend the November meeting of the Council of Government's Executive Committee. At that time, we had a presentation concerning compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act and all the complexities of that. And I know our own code enforcement officer and our, what's fire chief. our fire chief, he's, he's the compliance officer for the <coughs> town, have been brought up to speed with that as best you can. It's really very complicated, is what I came away with. Uh, two or three weeks ago, I attended a Chamber of Commerce event called Bragg Over Breakfast, which is some, an event they have for relatively new members, and I was able to give some good plugs about our museum that day. Had some very nice comments from business people who were also new members of the Chamber, how appreciative they were of having a government entity represented on the Chamber and the fact that government was willing to do to work cooperatively with businesses, which is something I think we all can keep doing better at. Over this weekend, I know many of you are aware that we had a bit of a storm event here. Um, Shore Road down by my house was closed. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else ran into those problems. But I do sincerely want to thank the fire police unit for their work over the weekend. They really did a good job. It was hardly the type of weather you want to be out in, not the most pleasant way to spend Saturday and or Sunday at all. And I also want to thank our public works crews and our director of emergency preparedness. They all did a fine job over the weekend and made some good common sense decisions, I thought. Final item, which is extremely sad for me, is we had a death recently of a gentleman who was very important to this community. Ed Capano died. And some of you know him as Mrs. Capano's husband. I spoke with one school group today, and they said, oh, yes, some of them had had Mrs. Capano in first grade. Ed was very active in a lot of areas, and just want to say a couple of words about how active he was and all that he did for the town. He was on our school space study committee. He was a library trustee. That's where I first got to know him. He was on the Board of Historic Preservation, and I had one more. He was on the fundraising committee for the museum at Portland Headlight. He did a lot of other things for this town that weren't in a committee format, and we have really lost a very good person. I know a lot of other counselors will share that thought with me. He certainly will be missed. Anybody else have anything for reports and correspondence? Okay. Don't want to break it. <laughs> The council has a policy of recognizing our sports, our high school sports teams when they win a state championship. And we had one such team this fall, the high school boys soccer team. If you gentlemen would like to come up here so people can see who you are and your coach too.
And I do appreciate so many of you being able to be here tonight. I know the season is well over and a lot of you are into your next season of sports or other activities, so we appreciate you taking time to be here. You have received a number of accolades since the end of the season that we are aware of. We had this all ready for you a month ago, but you were up at the high school having your own awards night that evening. And a lot of those other accolades have come from out of state and the, whole, the state as a whole. What I want you to remember about this one is this is what you're getting from the town and from the people who know you. Cape Elizabeth Town Council, resolution. Whereas the Cape, high, Cape Elizabeth High School boys soccer team recently won the main Class A soccer championship, and whereas the team completed another successful season with a record of 18 wins and no losses, and whereas the sport of soccer is enjoyed by hundreds of Cape Elizabeth youngsters, and whereas the achievement of the state crown is the culmination of practice over many months and training over many years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, in town council assembled, does hereby congratulate the state champion, Class A soccer champions, and we wish them well as they pursue additional athletic and academic goals. Dated this, it was dated the ninth day of November 1992, and it's signed by all the counselors. Congratulations. That's what you get me standing near the mic. <laughs> um, yeah, I was coming up here, I was definitely going to thank the town of Cape Elizabeth, especially the fans um, of all the sports. I'm sure all the teams, the soccer teams, do appreciate, appreciate that fan support. And I said it once and I'll say it again, I think it is the best of uh, fan support in the state and um, I'll say one last thanks to the team especially the younger kids I'll speak for all the seniors right now you guys are gonna be good next year too and you know I hope you I hope you do as well as we did this year that'll be tough to do though so <laughs> <good luck>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, on to the more mundane items, perhaps. Item number 77 is to consider a recommendation from the Democratic Town Committee regarding an expiring term on the Board of Voter Registration and take any necessary action. Mrs. Pizzo, do you have that one? Thank you. In your packet, you should have received a letter from the Cape Elizabeth Democratic Town Committee. They are nominating Wayne T. Brooks to serve another three-year term on the Board of Voter Registration. His term would expire on 12-31. Uh, 1995 and Mr. Brooks is here this evening if you do have any questions. Okay. I'd like a motion on this please. I move the nomination. No second. Thank you. Any comment? All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. Seven to zero. Thank you Wayne. We appreciate you doing that. Do you want to say anything? You can come to the microphone if you <laughs> should have done this before. <laughs> We, uh, you have to come to the microphone so they can hear you. <laughs> it's a pleasant assignment, which I want to thank you and the Democratic Committee. We register very excitingly. The new people have come to town. In the last vote, I registered a woman from Malta. i would never, never seen a Malta person before. And a young Polishman with tears in his eyes and his naturalization papers to his hand. Came up like this to vote. It was impressive. Ah. And uh, we see all the new people that come to town and also occasionally a Democrat. Thank you very much. We are not going to make those partisan <laughs> comments. Councilor Jordan, do I hear? Do we have to? Uh, Act on the next name, or is that? I think we took care of that one previously. 
Yes, I, didn't, took, I didn't hear the name mentioned. We took time. care of that one earlier in the year when we needed an alternate because the, they were matching what the other party had done with an alternate. That was done last spring. And the clerk assures me it was taken care of. Okay. Want comment any further? <laughs> Thank you. Item number 78 is to consider a status report from the Service Delivery Options Committee and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, do you want to say that? Okay. Mr. Reardon? Members of the Council, good evening. I'm Michael Reardon, the Chairman of the Service Delivery Options Committee, and I'm here to render an interim report on the actions of our committee and the work that we've done to date. You should have a uh, updated uh, version that was faxed to Mike, uh, town manager today that uh, corrected, uh, had some minor, minor editing in it. In any event, uh, our committee was formed on uh, September 1st, uh, 1992 uh, at, a, uh, at our inaugural meeting. The members of the committee, uh, Steve Bates, John Brady, Gil Jordan, Gene Marvin, Elmer Murray, Richard Nest, and myself were briefed by uh, Councilors uh, Janet McLaughlin and Wayne Creelman on the scope and objectives of our project. Uh, our purpose was stated as uh, studying alternative delivery, alternative service delivery options, including privatization initiatives, fee for service potential, equipment leasing, innovative uses of municipal properties, and other options which might serve to stabilize or reduce the property tax burden on the town of Cape Elizabeth. Our charge included, among other things, working with the town staff to develop cost estimates for municipal services now provided, reviewing privatization initiatives and fee-for-service experience of other jurisdictions, uh, reviewing utilization of municipal space and properties, and preparing recommendations based on our findings. We were advised that the school budget was outside the scope of our study, except where such activities overlap with uh, town operations. Otherwise, uh, and uh, the report says in quotes, anything is fair game. Uh, the committee's met bi-weekly since September 1st. Uh, we've met every other week, and we've seven times to date. Uh, this report uh, is, is intended to provide the town with the status of our committee's work outline our plans for the balance of the study, and surface several issues which have the potential to affect uh, committee progress and findings. Uh, our, our first major task was, uh, was learning about the operations of the town, and, uh, to, uh, and to that end, we, were, we met on September 15th and 29th, and were briefed by all the town department heads uh, on their mission, organization, budget, and operations. We heard from uh, Public Works Director Malley, Police Chief Pickering, uh, Library Director Rallis, Fire Chief McGoldrick, and Town Manager McGovern. Uh, this was the, these sessions were very informative, and I think we gained a, a lot of insight into the workings of, of the town departments, uh, as well as the challenges that each, each of them is faced with. On, on the basis of those briefings uh, and subsequent committee discussions, our committee developed uh, a preliminary list of 23, uh, quote, targets of opportunity. And, uh, the, uh, that list was, was uh, subsequently uh, edited and revised at uh, several subsequent meetings. And the following areas emerged uh, uh, as uh, warranting more detailed uh, evaluation. Uh, public works functions, such areas as sewer line maintenance, grounds care, equipment maintenance, wood chipping, and snow plowing policy. The use of overtime versus uh, staff increases in certain areas. Uh, prosecution of certain uh, offenses under town ordinances rather than state statutes. Contracting court work to the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department. Purchasing and contracting procedures such as bid practices, specifications, uh, consolidation of, uh, of contracts, quality control, and vendor and contractor management. Acquisition of capital items, evaluating uh, purchase, lease, rental, uh, 
acquisition of used equipment and so forth. Consolidation of library facilities, uh, service fees, the adequacy of existing fee structure and the potential for any new ones, deployment of technology to improve productivity and quality, uh, the cost structure of the town benefit plans in comparison to private sector practices, and utilization for, of, of town property, particularly Fort Williams, as a source of revenue, uh, zoning modifications to accommodate unobtrusive commercial uses and therefore expand the tax base, and finally, uh, the establishment of a program budget system to allow costing by function. I want to stress that the committee has reached no consensus or recommendation on any of these items, and they are, are merely cannon fodder for, for further evaluation as our, as our study team uh, continues its work. Uh, another item that we accomplished uh, during our sessions was identifying several area towns uh, on which to benchmark Cape Elizabeth performance uh, and cost structures. And we uh, identified six, the towns of Falmouth, Cumberland, Scarborough, Gorham, Yarmouth, and Wyndham were uh, chosen for comparative benchmarking. And we obtained the town reports uh, from those uh, communities, and uh, Gene Marvin on our committee is quarterbacking an effort to uh, do some spreadsheeting and, uh, and ratio analysis. The next item is uh, on, at our last meeting, Glenn Kirstein, a town auditor, met with the committee and discussed, uh, to, to lead a discussion on, on lease uh, versus buy evaluation, as, as well as offer insight into, into town financial comparisons. Uh, on the uh, comparisons, we were cautioned by, uh, by Mr. Kirstein that it is uh, often difficult to uh, achieve an apples to apples to comparison basis among those towns. And, we were cautioned to, to be particularly careful in that regard. And finally, uh, by way of uh, the November 20th issue of the Cape Courier, the committee solicited citizen input uh, to the study process. And to this date, uh, I, I, as far as I know, I've heard from one, from one citizen, and I don't, know if any, I don't think anyone else on the committee has, but we do have had one person offer uh, some advice in, in uh, and requested to address our committee with a with a proposal, and uh, that that individual was uh, was told that our committee would uh, address that uh, at our next session, which is tomorrow night. And uh, we, I haven't decided. I think the the person's proposal was probably a little more specific than we want to get at this point. And uh, it was an individual individual who had something to sell. Uh, for the remainder of the study period, uh, and at this point, uh, I, th I think our, our uh, goal line is, uh, is March the 1st. Uh, we'll be fo focusing our attentions on the following tasks. Uh, each of those uh, 13 target areas I just enumerated will be analyzed in greater detail, and it's highly likely that we'll be wanting to do some follow-up sessions with the town department heads. We intend to continue and, and conduct a ratio analysis to benchmark Cape Elizabeth uh, among the selected communities. And we need to work with the town manager and department heads to develop uh, baseline unit costs. Uh, one of the things that we'll need to do to, uh, to make some comparisons to private contractors is to actually figure out how much a particular item or a particular service costs and, and the way the current budget process uh, is structured, uh, it's, it's pretty difficult to do that. And uh, we are considering interviews with selected officials in other communities to gain a wider perspective uh, of alternative service delivery options and how those may or may not have fared uh, as they've been tried before. I'd like to uh, conclude with uh, identifying several if issues that may have a bearing on our findings. Uh, one of our, me our members uh, has resigned, and uh, we would like that individual replaced. I've talked to uh, uh, Chairman McLaughlin uh, uh, in that regard, and we think that someone with a very strong financial background uh, or accounting auditing background would be a valuable addition to the group. Uh, Secondly, to properly evaluate service delivery options, we need to be able to make logical comparisons among alternatives and the lack of program budgets and unit costs 
makes this difficult. So we're going to be uh, going to, to Town Manager McGovern and the department heads, I think, to be able to, to try to extract some additional cost studies and so forth so that one might be able to take a particular activity and compare it to other options that, that, uh, that might be available. Um, on, on, on several occasions, our committee has is, is, uh, struggled with the question of how definitive can our findings be and uh, the availability of data, the resources available to it in the time. I think it's uh, safe to say that, we, that our findings may be more directional in nature than, uh, than highly specific. And then finally, when the business of the Service Delivery Options Committee is the subject of the Town Council agenda, we'd appreciate it if um, that uh, one of our members could attend and participate in any discussions and so forth. That concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mike. Comments or questions from councillors? Councillor Dahlbeck? I'd like to say I think there's an increased sensitivity to, the, to your last uh, comment, <laughs> Mike. Um, do you need any, other than that, replacing uh, uh, Elmer Murray, do you need uh, any additional resources? Should we be recruiting? I think we are going to need uh, resources through the staff and uh, as well as uh, uh, putting uh, assigning some tasks to, uh, to the departments. And that's, I think, mostly in regard to being able to, to arm ourselves with a set of numbers that we can take out and look at other ways of doing things and determining whether uh, the way the case is doing them now is, is, is good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, and we, we, we essentially don't have that. We, we've really uh, done, uh, we, we've, 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 we've passed through the sponge stage, I guess. We're trying to gather data and, and, uh, and, and learn the, the uh, uh, workings of the town. And I think we've, it's, the time has come now. We've got we've to put this to work in an analytical mode and be able to uh, make some sense out of it and draw some conclusions. And, and at this point, all we, all we have is a, is a, uh, a lot of individual input uh, on the basis of, uh, of of the seven meetings so far, recognizing that um, you'll probably never have all the data that you'd like to have, and end up having to make some judgments on this, uh, I would hope that at least you could give us your thoughts on the specific issue of uh, whether or not doing outside private contracting might have a significant impact on the uh, Cape Elizabeth budget. Uh, I think that was maybe a major issue that was uh, present during the last budget sessions. And your in, uh, insight on that, uh, e even if it isn't explicit to the penny, might be, uh, might be helpful uh, during the next budget session. You don't need to do that in, now. I'll okay, in my now. view, I think we can do that. And I don't want to to uh, signal uh, or, or pick, pick any particular activity. But just for the sake of argument, let's say it's cutting the grass. Uh, it would it, it be a, a fairly easy task to, uh, to ask an a, a independent service provider to come in here and give us a bid on what it might take to, uh, to cut the triangle down at Old Ocean House Road, for example. Um, the, uh, our, I think our major task will be finding out what does it cost the town, cost what does it cost the town to do that, and that's one of the things we've got to work with Mike and, and, and his people on. Good. It just, it, folks are doing well. Yeah. Just, just on that point, I, uh, the suggestion that the committee had to have us look at program cost a lot better, I think, was uh, extremely constructive and helpful. Uh, Bob Malley's been spending uh, almost full time. Uh, the last couple of weeks on in looking uh, at all the different programs he met with Gene Ginn Marvin initially and uh, just cite one example street sweeping uh, we've not only looked at the time that uh, is spent actually sweeping the road but then taking the mechanics time and how often the mechanic is uh, uh, is at the sweep or the replacement of the rooms and Bob now has a complete total cost of sweeping 
that will enable, uh, as well as for a lot of other program areas, that will enable the committee then to look at uh, comparable private sector cost uh, for providing the same service. So uh, it is coming along. It's also really raised an important issue in, in terms of the whole way we conduct our budget and uh, that we need to do a lot more in the way of a program budget instead of uh, simply line item budget. I know for all this frustration your committee has gone through, I hope you're seeing the nodding heads up here. It's, it's been a real tough assignment, and I, for one, certainly appreciate that. I believe my fellow counselors share that appreciation, and hopefully you can feel the appreciation and the fact that changes are already taking place because of your work, and just keep it up, folks. It's, it is a very difficult task that we gave to you. It was kind of an amoeba that you are now caging in a bit and putting a good shape on, I think, and doing a very good service for the town. The one issue you have brought up about an opening on that committee, I would at this time just put forth a general plea to the citizens. If there is someone with financial analysis expertise who would be interested in serving on this committee for the next two or three months, that is the kind of, that's one resource we need, and I think we can hopefully get somebody from the community to do that so we aren't going to have to contract out to get that kind of help. And that would be my hope. And um, I would say if you are interested to get in touch with the town manager, or the town clerk, somebody, somebody, whoever with the town clerk, <laughs> yeah, whoever answers. And um, we'll see if we can get that position filled on your committee. One item. Go ahead, Councillor Pearson, and then I'll talk about the <coughs> I just wanted to personally uh, say how excited I am by the, uh, the resourcefulness and the diligence that you guys have put in, gals and guys, uh, have put into the, the effort here, and uh, encourage you to really continue in the direction with the no bars, no, no holds <laughs> bars, there we are. And if you find, face any uh, roadblocks or anything along the way, to share it, not necessarily just with any one d individual, but with any of the council or the town staff, because I think everyone is important, and that one might be the one. So Thank continue. You. Thanks. We'll do that. I, said, uh, I did uh, mention at the conclusion of the report that our, our interim report uh, target date was, uh, was, was moved uh, when we uh, when we uh, were chartered, uh, I think it was from the end of November to the middle of December, we got a little bit of a uh, extension. Uh, and uh, March 1st uh, looms as a very aggressive target date, and uh, I, I think the council should should be advised, uh, uh, at least at this early point, that, that uh, we may be trying to negotiate an extension on that, because the March 1st date didn't move, although the interim date did. So. <laughs> And do you want to do that negotiation now, or do you want to wait no, and I, I see think, how things I go? No, I think we need to we need another couple of meetings under our belt to okay. to uh, determine uh, how how the landscape emerges here. Mm -hmm. I believe we had originally set March first to help the council in its capacity as finance committee deal with the upcoming budget, but yeah. we will certainly entertain some negotiations with you on that. As I said, I think we're going to see some changes in how the budget is presented because of the work you've done already. Uh, well, no, that was just my comment. Uh, while you can, you know, while we can negotiate a final, final report after March 1st, the more we have by the time the, uh, we sit down to do the budget, the, uh, it'd be helpful. No one more than me wants to conclude this as <laughs> oh. soon as possible. So. What you have here could last for years. <laughs> it's probably just as well we do have a pretty aggressive deadline on it. Councilor Coxell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just wanted to know if um, Mr. McGovern had passed on information about the MMA meeting in January, the mm. panel that you're having on privatization. Is that not, information? No, not yet. Time? The committee's meeting tomor tomorrow, tomorrow evening. Tomorrow. And you'll do it then? Yeah. It sounded like it might be worthwhile. Councilor Chapel. Michael, the, uh, I read this uh, title of your committee, the Service Delivery Options Committee, and I didn't know what I was talking about when I read it, and I'm on the council, so you've done a wonderful job <laughs> with that start. I'm proud of the whole darn bunch of you. I can't take any credit for the, uh, for the title of the committee, but uh, it's, uh, it's a good euphemism, I guess. He was on the council that set it up, so. 
<laughs> I'd also like to thank the, uh, the other committee members, two of whom are present tonight, uh, for their efforts and also the work of, the, of, the, uh, of, of Mike uh, McGovern and the, and the town staff uh, who've been very cooperative and so forth. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank we you appreciate you. your work. I'd like a motion to receive that report, please. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0, please. Thank you. Item number 79 is to consider the acceptance of a portion of Jordan Farm Road and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, Jordan Farm Road is part of the Highlands at Broadcove subdivision. Uh, it was constructed uh, two town specifications uh, earlier this year. Uh, it, is, it is now nearly complete with the exception of a, of a little bit of landscaping. Uh, we do hold a letter of credit to ensure that that landscaping uh, will be completed. Uh, as part of the acceptance process, we require uh, the developer to uh, provide to us a quick claim deed, uh, excuse me, with a description of the property. Uh, that has been done. Uh, we also require that two prints of the preliminary record drawings uh, be submitted. Uh, as the letter dated December 8, 1992 from uh, the town engineer indicates, uh, we did receive uh, record drawings uh, on December 4th. However, they did not show all the facilities uh, as constructed. Uh, the developer is, is working with Owen Haskell, uh, a very reputable surveying firm, uh, to complete those drawings. However, uh, as of late this afternoon, when I spoke to uh, Fred Moore and the town engineer, they uh, had not as of yet uh, been submitted. Uh, Consequently, uh, it'd be my recommendation that you table this until uh, those are received and perhaps before someone makes that motion and it's not debatable, uh, the developer is here uh, in case he should like to add anything to what I've said. Mr. Peter. Kennedy? You have to come to the microphone. You're going you're gonna to say nothing. My name is Peter Kennedy, the developer. I was unaware that Owen Haskell had failed in their tasks, which they were supposed to complete by last week. My yeah. apologies. Yeah, the, the real issue here is that until it's accepted, if it snows, uh, the developer is responsible for the maintenance of the road. So I recommend that it be tabled. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Seven zero. Thank you. We hope to see you next month. We will. Item number 80 is to consider a proposed reorganization of several town agencies and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, over the last several years and, and even before that, a number of positions were created in the town. And as they were created, either uh, they were all created in a way that they reported directly to the town manager or they were created in a way that we were a little uncertain uh, as to their administrative structure. Uh, what I'm recommending that, you know, in order to uh, give standing to some of these agencies at the council level, as well as to improve coordination, to enhance communication, as well as to reduce the number of individuals who report directly to me, uh, that uh, the town look at a number of these agencies and decide how they best fit into the organization as well as certain positions. Uh, specifically, uh, the WET team uh, coordinator, uh, known as WET1, uh, reports directly to the manager. And it's, it's being recommended that that uh, unit and that individual uh, report to the fire chief. Uh, the fire police unit uh, was informally recreated several years ago. Uh, it was funded uh, by the town council uh, with a very small budget this past year as part of the police department budget. It is recommended that that be for, uh, formalized uh, within the police department uh, with uh, clear lines of authority. Uh, the tree warden uh, position has been in effect for a number of years. It's recommended since uh, uh, Rick Churchill, the tree warden, and previous tree wardens worked most closely with public works that uh, that, that the tree warden uh, uh, report directly to the Director of Public Works. The Harbor Ordinance, uh, it's, it's proposed that the Harbor Master uh, 
work with the chief of police since the harbor regulations are primarily law enforcement regulations. Uh, the sale of weights and measures uh, probably takes about 10 minutes of my time during the year, but nonetheless, uh, I'd recommend that, uh, that that be part of the code enforcement department. Uh, should, overall, this would reduce the number of individuals reporting directly to the manager from 19 to 15. Uh, I found one more after this memo uh, was written. And I also hope it would uh, improve coordination in a number of areas. And uh, because, uh, at least in one instance here, uh, it, it is an amendment of a regular ordinance and not just the administrative code, the, the regular ordinance being the Coastal Waters and Harbors Ordinance. Uh, I would recommend that uh, this be referred to the Ordinance Committee. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. So moved. We have a Sorry. motion. Thank you. Any discussion? The Ordinance Committee ready? The Ordinance Committee will, I think, be meeting bi weekly <laughs> <laughs> the time we're through this evening. <clears throat> Fine. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sending it to the Ordinance Committee. All those opposed, thank you, 7-0. Item number 81 is to consider a memorandum from the town manager regarding sewer rates and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yeah, last week, last week uh, Finance Chairman Irv Chapel and myself met with uh, Doug Stewart and Steve Gordon of the Portland Water District at which they presented to us the Portland Water District sewer assessment for 1993. Uh, that sewer assessment is currently $922,900. It uh, will be going to $1,016,500. That's an increase of 10.1%. As the assessment constitutes 75% of our municipal, of our sewer budget, excuse me, it will be necessary to adjust revenue by approximately 7.6%. Uh, in other words, to increase sewer rates by 7.6%. Uh, in order to accomplish this, I'm re recommending a number of variations in charges. Uh, first of all, to go to the 100 cubic foot basis of charging that the Portland Water District uses in Cape Elizabeth for water rates, so people have a consistent pattern of rates uh, for both water and sewer. It's recommended that, that the initial minimum rate uh, go from $34 for the first 300 cubic feet to $31 for the first 100 cubic feet. The incremental rate charge uh, be adjusted from $275 for each additional 100 cubic feet to $3. Uh, the minimum user's charge would go from $34 to $31, but the minimum user who's using 300 cubic feet would see their rate go from $34 to $37 because they need to pay for two 100 units at $3 per 100 unit. Uh, the average bill would go from $45 per month to $49 per month. Uh, the school department rate, uh, based on, uh, we've looked again at the number of students and staff, uh, would actually decline very slightly from $68,745 per year to $67,890. The connection fee would be adjusted, uh, in this case I tried to keep it on round numbers. So it'd be recommending it be adjusted 7.8% to $830. And for those who have not paid the readiness to serve fee, the connection fee would be $2,300 for an increase of 7.4%. The readiness to serve fee would increase from $27 per month to $28 per month. Uh, this is only a 3.7% increase, but it, it, it does tie in very well with the incremental charge at, if 31 is the minimum for 100, uh, the $28 is $3 less than that for zero usage. So it follows a, a, a pattern of usage. Uh, I would recommend you set a public hearing uh, on these proposals for Monday, January 11th, uh, 1993. I have been working with Doug Stewart as well uh, at the Water District uh, doing a, a rate study to, to ensure that these rates uh, will bring in the revenue that we believe that, uh, that they will. Uh, the first list he sent me of the first cut of it, uh, there were some numbers that were wrong in it, but even uh, discounting those incorrect numbers, it looked like these proposed rates may be slightly higher than we will end up needing, but uh, it'll be uh, very slight. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I do know the burden of sewer rates, and unfortunately, uh, we went through the same process just a year ago when at this meeting 
we uh, recommended a, a sewer rate adjustment and uh, I'm sorry to report that I uh, need to make that same recommendation this evening. I'd like a motion, please. Set this to public hearing. Then we can have discussion. Uh, I'll move that goes oh. to public hearing. Second. That would be January 11, 1993. 7.30. Discussion? Councilor Dahlbeck. I'd just uh, like to know, Mike, uh, what the logic was of uh, dropping the base rate from 300 to 100. You're putting more at risk on the variable. Yeah, it, we are putting more at risk. What, what it does do, a uh, number of things. One, it, we, we have a uniform rate structure. The district charges water based on the first 100. It was felt that the, the town ought to start as well. Uh, secondly, it uh, provides some relief to the multi-unit dwellings in the community that we charge a minimum rate for, for each unit. Uh, for example, there's one particular apartment complex in the community where we charge 58 minimums. Uh, that particular property owner has always felt that they're paying an undue burden and uh, that has been a concern for some time. This addresses that a, a little bit in terms of uh, making that minimum cost slightly less while still bringing, bringing in essentially the same amount of revenue. Councilor Jordan? Yes. But moving it from 300 cubic feet down to 100 cubic feet, that'll affect some of the elderly couples, elderly people. How do those, do you have an idea how the average is for yeah. those? Most of the, the elderly people living alone tend to use around 200 cubic feet per month, and some use 300. So most of them will, st will have the same rate and will, will not experience an increase. They'll, they'll remain at the $34, which would be the rate for 200 cubic feet. If they, go, if they do, in fact, use 300, they, they would see their bill go up $3. If some of them could squeeze in with 100 cubic feet, uh, they would see their rate uh, go down $3. But for, for most of those folks, uh, uh, will we'll not see a rate increase. Uh, the, the rate increase will be primarily felt at the, at the rate of 700 cubic feet per month, uh, with the, with the, where it would go up $4 a month. Okay, my other question is, uh, <coughs> it, it would automatically increase 336 each year on February 1st on the connection fee. I don't like automatics. I think it should be reviewed each year, every couple, of three years. And I would like to see that change myself personally. On the next page on the operations, have they rearranged the numbers so that in wastewater operations goes down from 294 or 500 from 299, 272? Is that, have they rearranged the figures somehow so they get an increase in the total but they get a decrease up there? In that particular instance, it, uh, Council Chapel, correct me if, if I'm wrong, my recollection from my discussion with the district is that that was primarily because of the power charges at the treatment plant. Uh, CM CMP had uh, put in a new rate charge for the sewer treatment plant uh, two years ago. Uh, that subsequently is, is turning out a little less expensive uh, than had been thought, but not a whole lot less expensive if you look at the whole power bill for the treatment plant. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Other comments? <clears throat> Councilor Dahlbeck. Yes, I'd like to uh, go back on uh, Councilor Jordan's uh, comment on that $336 and understand the logic for that. That's, that's an increase of more than 10%. Uh, that certainly isn't pegged to cost of living. Now, what are you pegging that to? Uh, the Council decided as a, as a matter of policy several years ago that those not paying the readiness to serve charge uh, when they connected to the sewer would have to bear the same burden that those people who were paying the readiness to serve charge uh, were seeing. The readiness to serve charge uh, under this proposal would be $336 per year. Uh, so it, it's proposed that those who hook up later uh, pay off the depreciation for the line that occurred 
during that year and, and be on an equal footing uh, with those who paid the readiness to serve charge. And that, that's why that amount, that's where that amount comes. And that's also why it was determined automatic so that in, you know, it, it could even be automatic every, you know, instead of adjusting it annually, you could adjust the sewer rate, the sewer connection fee every month uh, by the amount of the readiness to serve fee. Satisfactory, Council. I, I now I understand. Yeah, it. Okay. We're not voting on the. That's right. We don't have to. Hold judgment. Like it or not, like it tonight. <laughs> as long as we understand what we're <clears throat> looking at. Any other comments? One question I have, Mr. McGovern, is what kind of effort does the Portland Water District put out, or should it be done by the town for water conservation measures, which would directly impact this kind of billing? I'm not aware of any, or a whole lot. Yeah. Yep. Councilor Pearson, thank well, you. I'll, I'll only comment because the last time I talked to anyone from the Portland Water District, they said it was not in their best interest to promote conservation because in actuality your cost would go up. Try to figure that one out. They've got a resource that they are confident could pump out much, much more than it's being used now. So the less you use the water based on these fees, if as much water was not used as we're adjusting these rates right now, they wouldn't generate enough revenue. So our costs would go up if we conserved and didn't use this. Do you follow that? As well as you do, I bet. No, I can follow yeah, that. I can follow it. I In don't other words, if, if, yep. if everyone went from using 300 cubic feet down to 100 and our revenues dropped. They still need to pay the bills. Exactly. Yeah, the assessment's fixed. Yeah. So. Councilor Coxell? Does Mr. McGovern know what their customer service entails since the cost of customer service is more than doubled? Yes. The, the water district really enjoyed telling us uh, about that one. Uh, <laughs> the customer service is up because part of the PUC rate case, uh, oh. <laughs> it was determined that they were not properly billing the expense for meters and for meter reading uh, to sewer customers. Uh, before customer service, we were primarily billed for the postage, for the mailing of the bills, and for the customer service individuals uh, at the water district. We were not billed uh, for meter reading, nor for depreciation on meters. And as a result of the rate case, those costs have now been moved over in, in part uh, uh, shared with uh, the sewer customers. There are some things you just don't win, right, that we're hearing. Well, regardless of what the Portland Water District says, I would certainly encourage people to exercise some water conservation measures and perhaps, I don't know if it's going to be appropriate, but if it is, the town could look into publicizing some of those. It makes sense from an environmental point of view, if not from a financial point of view for the Water District and the users, and I think it could help get a different kind of message across my soapbox for the evening. Um, Councilor Pearson. I, I was just going to say on that same note, it might behoove the council to consider at some time to include in the ordinance that any new construction does contain water saving devices because even though it won't directly affect revenues and whatnot, it will affect our capacity that we have with the sewage treatment plants, which could have a big impact okay. overall. I will make a note of that actually to pass on to the Sewer Appeals Board is going to be doing some ordinance work for us. Good. Just to, I will ask representatives of the district to be here next month to uh, <laughs> answer any other questions you may have. I know how much they appreciate coming to that kind of meeting. Councillor Creelman. Yes, I hope perhaps next month they can uh, let us know about the status of, you know, uh, individual customers simply calling in what their meter is at the end of the month and saving, you know, all this extra reading and postage and, and sort of this this overhead uh, variable that uh, seems to get delivered in the cost of higher uh, higher bills at the uh, you know at the end of uh, the, the the time period here seems like with with uh, you know uh, voicemail and so many other modern technologies we ought to be able to save something on that. I would agree, Councilor Pearson. I was going to say he just inspired one one final thought here. Uh, my my wife actually did call up to report which was substantially less than they averaged, mm -hmm. and we had a very nice refund. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it, it does pay to keep track of what the estimates are. 
Supposed, it's supposed to be estimated one month and read the next month or something like that. It can be explanation I got. If if they're estimating based on your summer usage and you do a lot of lawn exactly. watering and such, they keep estimating that they keep estimating the highest that you've hit during the year is what I've experienced. It doesn't always make a lot of sense. So I think most of us are pretty good at reading those meters if they had the ones we could read easily. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion <laughs> to, to put this to public hearing January 11, 1993. All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 82 is to consider updating the floodplain ordinance and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, as a result of some changes in state statutes as well as some requirements at the federal level, uh, there's some technical amendments that are necessary to our floodplain management ordinance. And I would recommend that this be referred to the ordinance committee. Second. <laughs> Council Coxell, <laughs> chairman of the ordinance committee. Uh, I guess I have a question, Mr. McGovern. As do you feel that the committee would be really the the body to be dealing with this, or shouldn't we just have our attorney do it? Or, according to the letter from Cog, they have different advisory groups and we can get a disk that's already put into a computer to make the modifications. Yeah, it, it's really easy to do. The, the problem is our our ordinance is codified and the one that they have on the disk isn't. It's a lot easier for us to just insert these changes and uh, uh, I spoke with Ernie about it today and Sandra is going to be doing that over the next few days. Oh, she is, good, yeah. because I know our poor planner is yeah. busy with many projects and what is the deadline that we need to meet in order to be in compliance if we have more storms like we had this past weekend we best make sure we meet that deadline mm -hmm. I you know there's no reason that when the ordinance committee meets in early January that that uh, can't be ready for you that's fine if, if we can get to it that evening we do have other things on the agenda I was just trying to say that I hope that you weren't meeting in December and <laughs> trying no. to send that message that way no Meetings already been set. Mm, the, these changes may be minimal enough that you can act quickly on it. I know I have also spoken with the code enforcement officer, and he's been in touch with um, at the state level with the folks he needs to on this. So he's ready to help the committee with it. Any further comment? We have a motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Seven zero. We have a busy, busy ordinance committee. Number, item number 83, mm -hmm. to consider updating the re refuse disposal ordinance and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, the recycling committee is already working on the refuse disposal ordinance. Uh, a lot of this is technical boilerplate, and uh, the, requi the requirements for a lot of this language is necessary because of the bonds for the borrowing for different regional waste system projects. Uh, uh, I would suggest that you refer this to the recycling committee but to the ordinance committee as well, since uh, so much of it is technical and the ordinance committee is uh, looking for work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to have some major resignations from that committee, <laughs> or else we'll have to expand it. <clears throat> uh, I guess my question, Michael, you, you said that the, um, the uh, recycling committee is already working on a town ordinance. Do they have it in a form that within a month they could present to us? I don't think it'll be that soon. They're they're looking at a, a number of issues, particularly in, in the recycling area, uh, mandatory versus optional. In fact, most of our ordinance is already worded that recycling is mandatory, and uh, they're just looking at how all the different changes that have occurred at the refuse disposal area over the last few years, primarily as a result of their efforts, uh, impact the ordinance, and how is making that sure it's updated. Relate to this one. Th this is just another whole set of, of issues involving regional waste, which mostly are unrelated to recycling, but you know, as long as we're looking at the refuse disposal ordinance, we probably ought to try to bring this together and do it as one package. It'll all be one, one ordinance. Go ahead. I was wondering in the uh, motion if we could set a deadline by the end of February to have comments from the recycling committee in reference to this. and pretty much a firm report from them on the okay. recycling as a whole. Yeah. I haven't discussed this with Nancy Miles, the uh, chairman of the committee, but uh, you know, if that is the desire, you know, I'll make sure I do everything that I can with them to make sure that 
this burden uh, does not add to their efforts that, uh, and I'll work with them in the other ordinance as well. Okay, the other part of this ordinance. Okay. So I move that this be um, given to the ordinance committee as well as the recycling committee for review and recommendations back to the whole council. Second motion. Did you want to put a deadline date in there? Uh, deadline date of the end of February from the ordinance committee, uh, from the recycling committee. Okay, if we hear that that's a problem, we can discuss it with them. Any further discussion? We have a motion. All those in favor? All those opposed? 7 0. Thank you. Item number 84 is to consider a request from the Town Center Planning Committee for time extension and take any necessary action. Yeah, we, uh, Maureen O'Mara and uh, Chairman Cogsell of the uh, Town Center Planning Committee, Bruce Cogsell, has requested a, uh, an extension uh, for the, the deadline for the Town Center Plan from December of 92 to May of 93. A couple of the councillors uh, are serving on that committee, uh, councillors uh, Pearson and Chapel and uh, they might be able to add uh, to this but the committee is is working along is meeting regularly and uh, is starting to get to the interesting point uh, uh, where they will be making some specific recommendations thank you Either of you gentlemen like to comment on this no i think one of the main reasons is that the report is pretty well in hand as far as uh, the zoning setbacks and what we'd like to see in the town center for regulations to stop <coughs> any construction that's not Good looking and healthy for the area, but the main thing was is to get some graphics to go with the report so when it's finally presented to you, you'd have an idea what we envision 77 looking like if the thing is accepted to give you something to work with. So the graphics was a little bit out of the realm of all of us professionals, so we had to get a gentleman in and he's going to prepare those and that takes a little while. So we'd like to that extension for that main reason so that we can give you a complete report mm -hmm. with graphics. I move the extension. Second. When was this originally due? Hmm? When was the original deadline on this? December, December the end of the year. December. Five extra months for graphics? That isn't five extra months. We're asking January, for it February, now. January, February, March, December. April, May. We'll have it the first of May. January, February, March, April. Four I'm months. seeing May 30th <laughs> somewhere, sir. We should yeah. have asked for six and you would have given us four. I believe it's going to be May 1st. Did, what was the motion for? May 1st. May 1st. May 1st is fine. If we don't get it ready for May 1st, we'll come That's back right. and ask for the That's 31st. Right. I mean, it makes no difference. Come back. Anyway you want to vote, okay. Come back to June 1st. You don't get it <laughs> Councilor Krillman. Will, will postponing this, uh, this report have any effect on our kind of shelving this uh, stoplight area at uh, Scott Dyer and Spurwing, we, we've been saying to the state we want to get our town center planning committee material before we uh, vote again on that issue. This is going to delay things for four more months. Yeah, the last letter we received from Bruce Ibargu and the traffic engineer at MDOT indicated that they were going to go ahead on the light at this point on Spurwink Avenue and that the other light would remain on the shelf uh, until they received the town center report. Uh, they had separated the issues a little bit and didn't indicate that they were putting it on the shelf permanently, but it indicated they'd take it off when they got that report. So, uh, you know, that will remain on the shelf until uh, uh, they, this report is received. So it'll add another four months to the shelf life. Uh, just on Council that, Dahlbeck. there's a funding issue, I suspect. The, the, according to the letter from Mr. Ibagu and the funding is unaffected. Could it go beyond the fiscal year? Yes, the way the state does uh, road projects, those projects go on for several years. It, it doesn't tie into the regular state fiscal year. Okay. Council Jordan? I, I wondered if the Town Center Planning Committee is looking into and I think the street light might have an effect uh, I don't mean the street light the stop light uh, would have an effect on it because I read in the school committee uh, minutes once here a while ago where they were thinking of a recommendation of more sidewalks around the corner up there and if they got 
and hoping that more children would walk and cut down bus transportation. So I think uh, some decision here should be made whether that should be looked at by some group to see if you, I would say you would want the light there if you've got students walking, period. We do have an application into PACS under the non-conventional projects uh, for sidewalks through this whole town center area as well as uh, Shore Road to the Community Center, Scott Dyer Road uh, to the middle school. Uh, the town engineer looked at it and the cost for all of those sidewalks would be 412,000. Uh, we're not sure at this time if PACS will fund those, but it is, it is being looked at and is still in the funding consideration. There is also a rep representative from the school board on this town center committee. I agree, Councilor Jordan. They need, it all needs to be I think pulled it, together. If I may again, I just sure. want to say that I understand who's on these committees, but I hope they're working together and not let the, the light drop and then all of a sudden feel like they, maybe we ought to have the light after they, because I'm not too much for sidewalks, but I am for safety. It's taken the royal character away from the town of Cape Elizabeth every time you put a sidewalk in because I like to the way the roads used to be, but I understand modernization, that you've got to have them wide and you've got to have the people off them. Thank you. Further comment? Okay, we do have a motion on this to extend the deadline to uh, May 1st, 1993. All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. Thank you. Item number 85 is to consider the acceptance of a grant from the Casco Bay Estuary Pro Project for a town center stormwater management plan and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, uh, we've received a letter several months ago from the Casco Bay Estuary Project uh, announcing the availability for grants. It was a rather tight schedule and uh, we prepared several applications uh, on quick notice. Uh, one of them uh, was funded and it's, it would have give us $12,000 uh, to prepare a stormwater management plan for the town center area. This evolved in primarily because of a walk that the town center committee took and, and recognized, uh, uh, number one, that uh, half the town center is, it has a big ditch on one side that's a little bit unsightly and uh, that should be looked at. And the other side, uh, particularly as you look at the shopping center area and how low that is, uh, the, the drainage going across Jordan Way, the open culvert and the deep hole on the intersection of Jordan Way and uh, uh, the shopping center in Route 77 that uh, the stormwater needs to be looked at in the town center. Uh, if you accept this grant, uh, we would have a 25% match. It, it is proposed that that be done in kind, uh, primarily with the time of the town planner. Uh, we uh, then would be back in touch with Casco Bay Estuary Project and we would put out an RFP for engineering services uh, to assist us with this project. Thank you. Any discussion? Council Coxell? I move we accept the um, grant from the Casco Bay Estuary Project for Town Center Stormwater Management Plan. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Yeah, I just had one. I, I wanted to praise Maureen O'Meara uh, for going after this and for you know working closely with the committee. And although the committee didn't specifically recommend that we go after this grant, it, it did evolve from their work. and. Uh, I think Maureen did well to uh, hustle to get this. It was a real tight time frame, as I recall. Okay. Those in favor, please? Those opposed? 7-0. Thank you. Item number 86 is to consider several annual appointments and take any necessary action. The manager is recommending that we, again, have the annual appointments for Assessor Code Enforcement Administrator Jerry, Gerald Daigle, Building Inspector Code Enforcement Officer Ernest McVean, Local Plumbing Inspector, Ernest McVean and Gerald Daigle. Deputy Health Inspector, Ernest McVean and Gerald Daigle. Do we need to do anything else? So okay. moved. Second. Questions, comments? All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. Thank you. That concludes the regular items on our agenda tonight. We now have <laughs> one citizen is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say anything to any citizen discussion of items not on the agenda? 
you're happy with us tonight. <laughs> I would just like to thank the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department for the little planning calendar books that they submitted to all of the counselors. I will second helpful. that. I had already ordered one, and I got it, and I received this in my packet Friday, and I turned in the one I'd already ordered <laughs> because I found this was going to work better for me. I think they're Very helpful. Yes. Thanks. You didn't get one last year? Guess not. <laughs> we have our citizen couldn't resist. <laughs> Getting lonely back there. Yes, it does. I, I was just and curious. Who are you? I'm Steve Simon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> citizen and state representative. I was curious to know if there are any issues uh, affecting Cape Elizabeth on the deadline of the land uh, fill closing, which is the 31st of December. Uh, assumed that there were not but i noticed that uh, many towns will be affected yeah i think it, before you came in that was discussed we received a letter today saying that we either have to close or agree to be one of six regional sites to host uh, an area for demolition and brush uh, i think a totally unreasonable requirement of the state uh, uh, they they said that they would decide by december 31st which sites uh, and yet it's supposed to be in operation if you read the letter by January 1st. So I don't know how the word would get out to the public and otherwise how we would implement transportation issues. And, uh, it's, it's an issue. Do you plan any kind of appeal? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any Thank help you. that uh, the delegation would like to be of assistance would be appreciated. Right. Also, I do have a meeting. The Governor's Municipal Policy Advisory Committee is meeting Wednesday morning and plan to raise the issue uh, with him as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Well, would you? Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Good evening.